All right, in this lesson, we're going to do a video review for terminology instead of what I usually do. Throughout all my other courses, I've simply included a lecture on terminology and given you some definitions so you can just read them on your own. However, because this introduction was filled with so much new terminology, I thought we'd go over it in a video review. So what are we going to do? I'm going to give you the answer and you're going to think of what comes to mind and then I'm going to flash it on the screen. For example, I'm going to say the SQL Server engine is composed of two main parts. What are they? And then I'll pause or you can actually pause the video and think about it. And then I'm going to splash them on the screen. The storage engine and the query processor. Microsoft's flavor of SQL is called what? And then I'm going to flash Transact SQL on the board. The part of SQL Server that accepts all incoming queries and devises a plan for them is called what? There are four core steps in processing any SQL Server statement. They are what? Parse, bind, optimize, and execute. What part of the process is responsible for checking for a valid syntax? What part of the process is responsible for name resolution, making sure all the objects exist? What part of the process is responsible for generating a group of candidate plans? according to the different costs. So the end product of all this is an all possible execution plans for a query is called a Plans consist of physical entities called cost estimation depends mostly on the estimation of the number of records in a table is called The distribution of values and columns of a table is called A plan can be created for very simple queries. These plans are called As these plans are created, they are stored in a section of memory called the This process ages out plans from the cache. If I change the structure of a table referenced by a query, I will cause all the queries associated that use that table to be 